Today I want to solve a really fun and satisfying problem. The big problem I want to solve is to build a marble machine that can play music live on stage. The first machine I built wasn't good enough. The second machine I built wasn't good enough. And now it's third time's the charm. Let's make it right the third time. I'm thinking something like this sketch from Andrew Carpenter. I absolutely love this sketch. It's kind of crazy, but also very, very motivating. To reduce the complexity of this huge problem of the marble machine, I'm going to take it in smaller chunks. We know that we need a music program. So there's two ways of doing this. We can either have a paper system like on a paper music box or we can have a programming wheel with removable programming pins and it's the wheel with programmable pins that I'm going to opt in for. So now we have the smaller problem of our programming wheel. We can zoom in one level down further. We need the programming pin itself. So the programming pin needs to be easily attachable and removable to get the correct music program. And in this video, I'm going to present to you a brand new idea I have for how to solve this problem. On the first machine, I used Lego Technique pins and they are great because you can put them in and out uh, easily. They are designed to do that but the grid is very limited. So you can't really adjust the sideways position and getting these things in a very precise position around the wheel was a slight nightmare. So it's not a precise and professional application. On my second machine, I had these magnets. For this machine, I had a better musical grid than with the Lego Technique things. I had three channels per channel. So in the middle, we had the 16th notes. And then on one side, we had the offbeat notes in between the 16th and on the outside, we had triplet notes. So it was better, but it was still very constrained. The worst thing with the system, apart from the fact that it wasn't accurate, it ha didn't have perfect musical timing, was that the magnets could break. I had several magnets that broke off in the middle and the part that broke off stayed inside the programming wheel. Last spring, I came up with the third idea of a lathed precision pin with a little groove and a little O-ring. And that would be put in and just the friction from the O-ring would held it in place. What I never liked with this idea, you had to really push them all the way in for the height of the pins to always be consistent. It didn't have a foolproof way of always finding its perfect height. The good thing with the pins was that instead of machining a complex pocket for the square magnets, the round pin was only a drilling operation. So I thought I was super smart. But with, with this system, we still have the issue of the constrained musical grid. So I've been thinking, perhaps there's a better way. And this is my answer, a programming profile. A programming profile like this not only solves a lot of the issues, but opens up for new features and a better musical grid. The wheel is spinning and the profile touches the reader and opens up the reader. And when the programming profile runs out here, the reader falls back and drops a marble. Drop. I made this test track for the click function. And this is obviously not the final solution, but let's look at the fit here. Wonderful. That clicks wonderfully. So you just put it in, click, it's secure in there, and you can take it out anytime you want. Click. This part is pretty big and there's not a lot of holes here in the makeshift programming wheel. So what about the musical resolution? So this is where the magic happens because we can make these profiles in different lengths. So this is first quarter note and this is second quarter note. And if I put them on top of each other, you can see that the below profile is longer. So even if I put it in the same hole as this one, the note will be played later. So let me demonstrate that with the little reader. So it's here and the reader will fall later. If I switch to the shorter one, the reader will fall earlier. And the cool thing here is that there's no limit on musical resolution anymore. We can do any the rhythm we want. Imagine if we want to make a drum groove with a little bit late on the snare drum. I can just make special profiles for that that is half a millimeter longer. We will have complete control over the musical timing. Does it really matter that we can play any musical timing? Yes, it does. For example, Lose Yourself Eminem.
that has a little jump to it. Taka 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 taka. It's a little shuffly. The last note, it's a little bit late. If I play it completely straight, it sounds like this. It's not as fun. So by having these programming profiles, we can actually play that kind of groove. And my big dream with the Marble Machine, I don't just want it to work. I want it to impress. I want it to play with emotions and to play with feelings. And I think this is an amazing extra thing that we're getting out of uh, the programming profile. <laughs> So here's a mock-up programming wheel that I catted, and right here is the profile. And as you can see, if we wanted 8 mile resolution, we would need 2 billion programming holes. And now you can see we have very few holes actually here. I made this into a model that I can actually crank with the mouse like this. And if I zoom in over here, this is going to be the reader. There's adjustability for the timing, that's for another video. So the programming profile is riding and right there this one falls back like so and the marble is played okay nice but that's not all this is one of my favorite youtube videos of all the time the amazing japanese traditional karakuri automata this amazing piece of art is actually picking up an arrow putting it to the bow and then shooting it and repeats the cycle for i think three or four arrows and how has the mechanical maker achieved this several hundred years ago? By using of cam discs. So let's just enjoy the shooting of the arrow here, tilting of the head, and boom, it goes. Inside here, there are cam discs. There are seven cams, so they're here they're numbered. So you can see them as separate programming tracks. There's a cam who's making this eccentric movement, and there's another cam and strings are connected to these cams and make the different things move. So another cam makes another movement. On the Marble Machine X, I had a lever to open and close the Hyatt to get musical expressions like these. So now we can take the principle from the Japanese automata, combine it with the musical expression of opening and closing the Hyatt, and we can program that with our programming profiles. So instead of connecting this reader to a marble gate, we can connect it to a Bowden cable that opens and closes the Hyatt. And then we can create any kind of profile we want. And we can put them in, for example, like this, and have actually a programmable cam disk. So when the programming wheel comes here, the Hyatt is closed, the Hyatt is opened, and it rides on it, the Hyatt is closed. We can go like this, but we can also go like this, we can go like this, probably not, but we can do any waveform we actually want on top of this. So this then will be programming profile, something like that. So we can build a lot of musical love into, <laughs> into the Marble Machine 3. A lot of human vibes, uh, open, close, hi-hat, sustain pedal for the vibraphone, dampening of the snare drum. I am painfully aware of what feature creep can do to your project. I started the first machine eight years ago, so feature creep must be avoided at all costs. Like, I don't have to change the design to still have the opportunity to build it into the final machine. Perhaps I need to skip it uh, to keep the machine as simple as possible. I don't think so. I think I can include it. It's a really fun thing to think about. A drawback with this system is that with different pins, you have to choose the right pin. It's not enough to put a pin in the correct hole like previously. You have to actually take the right kind of pin. In my mind, the advantages are easily outweighing the disadvantages. Yeah, and this is my satisfying solution for today's video. The last two years have been a little bit chaotic for me with the failure of Marble Machine X and the move from France to Sweden and dealing with other life issues have taken up a lot of my cognitive abilities. But I feel hopeful for 2023 
to uh, provide a stable direction towards this crazy, crazy goal. And this is the roadmap for the project. So if I expand this list, we have subcategories around each categories. So I have six big design points. And then point number seven is that I'm going to build a prototype full-size prototype with one channel only. After that prototype has been verified, I'm going to design and build a full machine. Then I'm going to record the album. Then I'm going to go on the world tour. Why not? Let's do it. So let's check here on point one, the marble gate design. We actually did all these last autumn in the marble gate series. Boom. So now the adventure of Wilson continues. <laughs> So problem 2.1, programming pin. We solved that today, my friends. So at the end of each video, I hope to give myself and you the satisfaction of ticking a box. And I'm just going to work my way down this list until we are at point 10. Join me for the ride. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day and good luck with everything you are doing. <laughs>